What's going on guys? Welcome back to Trafish Aquatics. Today we are going to be talking about the check valve. Alright guys, so the check valve. There's a couple reasons I want to talk about this little guy right here today. Um, and that's because I don't hear a lot of people talking about it, so I want to. And I want to talk to you guys about the the safety that's involved with these and why they're so important when you're running an air stone in your aquarium. I also want to talk about how they work and I also want to talk about the restriction they put on your air system. Okay? So we're going to cover all that in this video. So the first thing I want to talk about is the safety. Right. So when you go and buy an air pump, most air pumps are going to come with one of these and the reason that they come with one is because there is a possibility if you're running an air stone if the air pump turns off during a power outage, there is a chance that if the water flows back up your airline fast enough, it could flood your floor and siphon out your aquarium. And the manufacturers don't want that to happen, so they provide you with a check valve. And the way these work is there's a little arrow on it, so that's the way the air is supposed to flow. So it flows from your air pump into the check valve and then out your line to your aquarium. So if you have an airline, Right? We hook one up like this, and you blow into it. The air only goes one way. If we take this and flip it over and blow into it, you get nothing. Right. So that's basically how a check valve works. Now, if you don't have one of these, what will happen is if the airline is sitting up over the edge of your aquarium and your power turns off, the water is going to travel back up this and depending on if your aquarium is very full, it could come right up to the top over and start siphoning out your aquarium. So that's why they provide these check valves as a safety measure to protect you and uh, your belongings, right? So one thing I want to show you guys, and I was not able to find a diagram or anything of what these look like when they're broken down into their main components. So I went ahead and I sacrificed one of mine because I have a bunch of them. Um, so I can show you guys how they're made what they look like inside and how they work. So we'll grab this one right here. I took a hot knife and I went around the glue where the seam is here. You can see how I split it apart and then it just pulls apart, right? So you have a hollow cylinder with an airline on attachment on the end of it. And then on this end, you have a little rubber valve, right? If we take that off of there, we have the the valve seat and then the other end of the airline hookup. So there's only three components, these three pieces right here, and essentially the way they work is this is your entire valve. When air passes through here, the end of this, I'll see if I can get this to focus on it. I don't know if we're going to be able to because it's the way the color is. If I squeeze this, you can see the end of that open. When air travels through this, that end opens. So I'll see if we can get it to do it on camera. Don't know if it's going to let me. Did you see that open? So when your air pump is running, that's how the air flows through that. Now, if the opposite was to happen, so I'm just going to take this line and suck on it because it's going to do the same thing. If we watch the valve itself, it doesn't let any air through. So that's how the check valve works with water. If water was to back up into this, it will not allow the water through. It seals itself off. So if you run these backwards, your air pump's not going to be able to pump air through for that same reason. So that is how a check valve works. So the last thing I want to talk about is how restrictive a check valve can be on your air system. Now, I'm going to do a test on this to show you guys right, how restrictive it can be, and we'll do the math and calculate it out. But the first thing I want to show you is a very simple demonstration. And that is, if I blow through this again and show you guys, it takes quite a bit of force to be able to push the air through that little rubber valve. Now, if I was to pull this little rubber valve off, 
I can blow through that much, much easier without much difficulty. So your air pump is having the same issue, right? So one thing to alleviate that is running your air pump above your aquarium. Then you will not have to run a chuck valve because the water will not be able to back up higher than the uh, volume of the tank or the height of the tank, right? So one way to eliminate the check valve, run your air pump higher than your aquarium, done deal, you don't have to worry about it. So for the next portion of the video, I'm actually going to run a test using this one quart cup and one of my sponge filters running an air pump. We're gonna be able to fill this cup with air, right? Completely submerge it in the water, let the cup fill up with air, and when it gets to the one quart line, which is right here, I'm gonna stop the timer. We'll take a measurement on how long it took to fill it. And then we're going to install a check valve and do the same test again, check the time on that. And then we'll be able to figure out how many liters of air per hour the reduction is, right? So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna get this set up and we're gonna run this test. All right guys, so before we go ahead and run this test, it was brought to my attention that the star of this YouTube channel is not me, um, and it is my fish, which that is true. Um, the fish do get all the attention on this channel. So uh, what I'm gonna do uh, for the person that called me out, Dan, thanks. Um, I am going to feed the bluegills here behind me and the pumpkin seeds. And uh, we'll do that before the test. That's also gonna prevent them from biting me. So we'll go ahead and feed them. So here I've got a bowl of chopped up shrimp. So we're gonna go ahead. See if we can get them to jump out. I think they'll be okay for a little while with that. Alright, so what we're going to do is I have an old cell phone here with a stopwatch on it. So that's how I'm going to make the times for these. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to submerge this cup into the water and then start the timer and hold it over the sponge filter. And then um, as it fills up and reaches the one quart, I'll stop the time, we'll mark the time, and then we'll do it again with the check valve, and that'll be the test. Alright, so I'm going to try and stand back out of the way while we do this so you guys can watch the cup fill up with air. Hopefully you'll be able to because it's kind of opaque. Um, but here we go. Alright, so I got the cup in here and we are going to start the test now. Okay. So that took 41 seconds. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to unhook the air stone or the sponge filter. We're going to install the check valve and we're going to run the test again. Um, so we'll go ahead and put the camera over here. So this is the air pump here. Right, you guys will be able to watch me do this. That way you know everything's legitimate. This is the airline here. I'm going to install this airline. Put the check valve on it. Here. And then we're going to hook this airline back up. Right? Everything's
everything's running good again. So we're going to run that test one more time. Remember the first one was 41 seconds. And we are going to start that now. Okay. So there's the test. We've got our data. 51 seconds. So we're going to take that. I'm going to do a little bit of math and then I'll explain to you guys what it means. So without the check valve, we had 41 seconds to fill the quart. So times four quarts, that's 164 seconds to fill a gallon. So 164 seconds divided by 60 seconds is 2.73 minutes to fill a gallon. So 60 divided by 2.73 is 22 gallons per hour is what the output of that pump has without a check valve. With the check valve installed, we had 51 seconds to fill a quart which is 204 seconds to fill a gallon, which is 3.4 minutes per gallon to fill, which comes out to 17.5 gallons an hour. Now, 17.5 gallons an hour versus 22 gallons an hour is a 20% reduction in efficiency. So the check valve is actually reducing your output by 20%, right? So a lot of times if you get an air pump that's rated specifically for your tank size and then you run a check valve, you're now actually running a smaller amount of air through it. Um, and that could potentially cause uh, premature wear on internal components um, and failure of the air pump. So my personal suggestion to you guys would be make sure that you're running your air pumps above your aquariums to eliminate the use of a check valve so that way you're not running the risk of wearing your air pump out sooner um, but that's been my video on check valve guys as always links for products i use down in the description go ahead and click on those buy yourself some great stuff um, i got all kinds of medications filters everything it's all down in the description go ahead check it out it's all on amazon Thank you guys for watching Trafish Aquatics, and I'll see you guys in the next video.